Hi, it's Greg from Suburban Men. I'm here with Travis Geisler. You are the competition director for Team Penske. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that means? Yeah, it's uh, a little hard to explain. Sometimes it's uh, it's herding cats, I think, is probably the best way to explain it. But I oversee all the at-track operations for Team Penske on the NASCAR side, and then also try to help uh, manage the technical spec of the car. So there's a lot of things that go into deciding everything about what we're going to bring to the racetrack. And um, there's a lot of people back at the shop between engineering groups, you know, aero department, assembly, fabrication, all those groups that uh, have to collaborate together to figure out, you know, what do we want to build each week. So that's a big part of my job uh, during the week. And then on the race weekends, I'm here with the teams, kind of trying to help manage things, make sure everything's going smoothly. If we have any issues with the car or logistics or personnel, whatever it is, kind of ends up uh, falling into my lap to, to try to help sort out. So uh, I've been doing it now for 11 years and have had a uh, had, had some pretty good success, but certainly no better place to work. You know, to work for Roger Penske and the organization that we have here is, uh, is certainly a privilege. And you've actually had quite a varied career in NASCAR. Can you tell us a little bit about that also? Yeah, it's the fun part about racing. You know, nobody comes through this thing by any normal path. You know, there's, <laughs> there's no normal way to end up in NASCAR. Everybody has a different story. Everybody has very different backgrounds on how they got here. Uh, mine certainly started with you know racing with my dad growing up. You know we raced uh, at a hobby level, I'll say, but it was pretty ridiculous hobby. <laughs> you know it's uh, very all-consuming. So did that growing up, and then started racing myself. You know kind of the normal track, ran go karts and late models, and ran um, some touring asphalt series, ran um, a dozen Xfinity races uh, in 04 as a driver, and had a, had a cool chance to to learn the sport from that side of it, mm -hmm. and then. Um, same time, got a mechanical engineering degree at Vanderbilt and nice. kind of went the, the race engineer route whenever I ran out of talent or, or money. I think it was a little bit of both <laughs> on the driving side. So I uh, was a race engineer for a few years and was crew chief for a few years and then uh, moved into this position. So um, it's been fun because I had an opportunity to experience a lot of different angles of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pretty indirect path, but I think everybody, like I said, everybody here is taking some indirect path. Right. How did being a driver help you? with what you do now? I think it definitely helps relate. You know, I've had an opportunity to drive at a lot of the racetracks that we go to. So, you know, I, I've got a feel for some of the comments or why they're saying what they're saying. A little bit of a, a step inside the head of, you know, what goes on during a long run, what goes on during qualifying, you know, mm -hmm. the different mindsets of the drivers. And that's, uh, that's pretty hard to understand because nobody really races like T-ball. You know, if you, if you go and you end up in a baseball or basketball whatever, you can go play that on your own and kind of get a feel for you know how special the guys are that are doing it for right. a living but in this sport nobody really does it at that you know unless you go and do it yourself so mm -hmm. um, having that experience was certainly good and it helped me as a young engineer kind of quickly get myself up to speed I think that's something that you know we struggle with um, kind of the indoctrination phase of young engineers a lot of times because if they've gone the traditional you know, university route, it's all kind of book work. If they haven't done a lot of stuff outside of that, they really struggle to kind of grasp, like what the heck is all going on here? Uh, because it is a bit of a, a circus and the, the grind of 38 weeks in a row, the pace doesn't really allow you to, to catch up. You, know, right. you just kind of keep getting behind. So it enabled me to kind of have an understanding of the sport before I had to understand the technical side of the sport, you know, and that I had to work towards and that took mm -hmm. me some time, but at least I knew the ins and outs of getting around the place. Right. So we're in one of your haulers. Can you yep. tell us a little bit about what a hauler is and, and what you have inside of here? Sure. So this is um, pretty much home base for the two team that we're in right now. This uh, is kind of duplicated for each of our teams. You know, we run the two, the 12 and the 22. So uh, they're all parked next to each other and they vary somewhat, but we do try to keep a lot of things the same so that everybody's kind of comfortable if you've got to go in somebody else's hauler. But uh, really we haul everything here from literally the kitchen sink um, yes. to engines, to spare cars. Uh, we have a lounge area up front we can take a look at that has kind of the command center for the race team. So crew chief, race engineers, driver, everybody kind of hangs out there to work on it. It's kind of our office uh, at the racetrack. So that's where strategy and car setups, data is analyzed, all those sorts of things happen um, up there. And then there's kind of another group of you know, eight, 10 people that manage the car from the, um, you know, the garage side of it. Mm -hmm. We have a, a car chief there who's kind of like the lead mechanic. 
He's making sure that all the changes, all the things, you know, the specs of what everybody's decided on are in the car correctly. Make sure we're ready to go through tech, you know, all the, the maintenance throughout a weekend, you know, nut and bolt checks and all those things kind of happen out there. Um, but this supports everything. It goes to every race. Uh, when we run, they call the West Coast Swing at the beginning of the season. These stay out on the West Coast because there's not enough time to drive back okay. from Phoenix and back out to Vegas and, and kind of do that turn. So we leave these out here and we send a whole other truck out with equipment and they kind of do what we call swap out. So we'll take the two cars out that are above our heads, you know, that just raced, put them in the other trailer, put two ones in that are new, fresh uniforms, fresh whatevers, and, and kind of go again. So this is uh, the guys that drive this truck are definitely committed. They're definitely uh, in charge of a lot of things. You know, they've, they've got to keep a lot of things in check. There's kind of lists every weekend of what what was missing or what they ran out of and it's uh kind of like keeping a whole hardware store and, and race shop in, in a box yeah you'd almost have to have a little bit of ocd to try and keep all of this stuff organized and in place i think everybody in this deal has a fair amount of that <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes that's a little tough to deal with with everybody but we're um i mean you're down to pens and pencils are lined up mm -hmm. batteries are lined up everything's just organized it's the only way to really be prepared and and you know, to kind of handle the logistics of every week having to turn it around and go is, is uh, routine is the best way to, to not miss details. You know, I think that's the regiment that you go through no matter what. You know, our pilots have checklists they go through every time before they land, and we have checklists for just about everything on this as well. Right. So when the race is over, how long does it take you to pack everything up? And then when you get to the next track, how long does it take you to get ready to get, get the cars ready? Yeah, when the, when the checkered drops that's when the real race starts <laughs> that's the race to the airport for everybody so uh, load up is fast you know that's one thing on the NASCAR side uh, that's very different than our other disciplines of racing you know indie cars sports cars the other the other series that we compete in it's kind of a long drawn out affair there's hours of cleanup there's you know tearing everything down this deal um, packs up and moves pretty quickly I would say uh, depending on what NASCAR decides to do for post-race inspection, that's you know that's kind of always the wild card. You never how long know how long that'll take you. Mm -hmm. But if it's just the cars released right off the track, they let us load up. You know, normal thing. We can be loaded up and out of here in about 40 minutes. Wow. Um, and that's you know, cars, equipment, people changed into minivans headed to the airport. So um, that process is really quick. And and in reverse, the the unload process is really fast as well. I mean, the guys are. Um, pretty darn good at getting things set up. NASCAR's gone to allowing us to unload what they call the center aisle, which is where we're standing now, which is where all of our toolboxes and utility carts and all of our equipment unload from. So when we park the trucks the night before or the morning before the garage opens, they let us unload all that stuff. And the truck drivers are here and kind of get all that stuff sorted. Okay. So when the mechanics come in, it's kind of your right to business. There, there's not a whole lot of setup work left to do. Um, okay. Those guys can get all of it unloaded in about 20, 20, 30 minutes. So this truck will be loaded up and it will go to the next track, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, absolutely. How do you handle replacement parts, supplies? Sure. Do you have someone meet you at the next track or? No, this this will go back. Um, you know, we're fortunately racing today in Alabama, which is pretty close to home. So this truck will be home tonight. So first thing Monday morning, all the guys and girls back in the shop will tear everything out take everything out that was used you know the parts for this racetrack are very specific because it is a super speedway mm -hmm. compared to next week which is kansas so all the you know spare rear end housing spare gears all those things spare headers are all different for next week okay so that stuff all comes out and each group at the shop has their own department and they are responsible for getting the stuff back on so you know the gear room will have all the stuff for kansas sitting there ready to go with the new gear ratios those guys will just take off this stuff and put the other stuff in, and it's uh, it's about a day turnaround. Okay. Um, if it's as fast as we can really do it well, uh, but the truck won't leave till Wednesday night. So you know the, the road crews, which are the guys and girls who work on the stuff all weekend, they typically take Mondays off or work a half day Monday, and then they'll work Tuesday, Wednesday, load the cars up Wednesday night, trucks leave Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and uh, kind of start to cycle all over again. Okay. Uh, do you want to sure. take a quick walk through sure. and yep. show us what's Yeah, like what's I said, the kitchen here? sink's right here, so food's always first. <laughs> food's uh, right, in, right inside the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, there's actually a catering company that kind of does the, the large meals for us, but we also try to keep some quick foods around, mm -hmm. just kind of grab-and-go snacks for, for everybody to kind of keep moving. And there's 
you know, everybody has a locker back here, so their own personal stuff, you know, their change of clothes or whatever they need to get through their day. Yep. That way they have a place to put it. And if you notice, there's not a lot of stuff laying around. Everybody's pretty much expected to, to have their stuff put away. Right. Um, but as we go back through, um, set all the spare parts and stuff up this way, I guess. This is the engine cabinet. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little hard for us because I can't let you see in here. Yeah, but no, that's fine. This is all the you know different plumbing and parts and pieces, spark plugs, power steering pumps, all those sorts of things in there. Yep. Uh, a lot of racetracks, we change valve springs before the race, so we'll have our race valve springs in there. And then uh, after practice, take those out, swap them out. Okay. And those guys will go through that. Okay. Um, kind of more spare parts. This is uh, when you get into rear gear coolers, fuel cells, spare oil, spare duct work, different things, you know, that that are kind of all the auxiliary systems of the car. You know, everybody's kind of ready for anything. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. we gotta be pretty good Boy Scouts because there's not a lot of support. If we don't bring it, we, we may not <laughs> end up with it, it right? <laughs> um, spring cabinet, you know, you can kind of see there's uh, usually about 150 springs that we travel with each weekend. Everything from uh, something really soft, really light, like this, it doesn't have much rate. Um, all the way up to this, wow. which I think this, tra this trailer could use probably. So <laughs> just depends on uh, where you're going. You know, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll go to Martinsville and we'll run really, really soft springs because it's a short track. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of aero load. There's not a lot of vertical load. But here, there's a ton of aero load and a ton of vertical right. load. So we run a lot of spring to be able to keep the car off the racetrack, basically. Okay. This area here is um, for shocks. This is where all the shocks get rebuilt. We have two different dynos, one's for springs, which can basically check your spring rate, but then also you can put spring rubbers in to change how the spring acts as it compresses. You can have it add rate at a certain place, so it's a, it's not a linear spring at that point, so we have a dyno to figure that out. And then a dyno that basically runs, um, you can run a track file or just kind of a consistent speed, and that allows us to change the shocks and you know affect the way the car handles. Okay. Uh, that's what this area is, there's a bunch of spares. You know, everything's pretty well organized. Everything's laid out. Um, Are there limits the different parts to the pieces. number of the different components that you can bring, or is that at your discretion? Um, the DOT limits us to eighty thousand pounds, okay. and that's our okay. limit. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's a, a pretty good question, but we stack everything in we can. And over the years, I think we've gotten a little better at you know maybe some shared spares, things that we very rarely use. We may only haul one or two of them. And we'll share them between our three. Things. Yeah. Okay. So okay. not okay. everybody carries three of you know. We're not carrying three of every single part anymore. Right. Um, right. But then there's parts like springs where each team needs to have their own inventory and, and their whole own setup. So. Okay. Um, we can take a walk up in the lounge here and take a look, see what these guys are up to. Well, come on up. Sorry to interrupt, guys. So this is the lounge area. This is where uh, I talked about all the race engineers, crew chiefs, drivers, all the people who are um, you know, kind of involved in deciding you know, what strategies are going to be, what the car spec is going to be for the race, uh, shock springs. Hopefully, uh, we made the right decisions for this weekend and, and things will go well for us. But this is uh, kind of home away from home. You know, everybody's got a little bit of a quiet place in the storm when they come up here and kind of close the door and guys can talk through with the driver what's going on and how practice went what they need to work on and, uh, and they're keeping it. a close eye on the weather yeah weather is always uh, always a question mark today is certainly one of those but I think we're I think we're clearing I don't know Shaggy we uh, we got a chance here today or we... let's say we get a chance let's see I hope we <laughs> have a chance it's not a very po positive uh as much as, he's willing That's to as much as he's willing to commit to. <laughs> we got a chance of rain too, is what you're telling me. Yes, sir. All right, all right. So that's it. That's uh, the two trailer. That's what this group goes racing with every weekend. And you know, like I said, all the trailers are pretty similar, but guys still like to do their own thing and and try to make sure that they have the best for their team. Yeah, sounds good. Travis, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. Sure thing. Thank good you. Good luck today. Appreciate it.